As we age, it is common for the large intestine to form little round outpouchings in the wall called diverticula. These usually do not cause much trouble, but sometimes they can become obstructed, resulting in inflammation and infection known as diverticulitis and can even rupture if untreated. Patients with diverticulitis often present with left lower quadrant pain and elevated white blood cell count. While diverticulitis is most common in the sigmoid colon, it can occur throughout the entire GI tract, involving both large and small bowel, and thus can mimic other causes of abdominal pain. These CT images show examples of diverticulosis, which is characterized by the presence of small, round, air-filled, or dark outpouchings, which are diverticula projecting from the colon wall. There are three key imaging findings that will help you diagnose diverticulitis. First, the diverticula will appear thickened and enlarged. Second, the surrounding fat will appear hazy or strandy, indicating inflammation. And third, there will be inflammation of nearby structures in reaction to the diverticulitis. In this example, the bladder is compressed and mildly thickened as a result of the inflamed sigmoid colon. Notice the hazy fat stranding around the colon in this image as well, further supporting the presence of inflammation. As we review the first case, let's look for these features. Let's start by scrolling directly to the left lower quadrant. We can follow the descending colon down, and as we scroll, notice numerous small outpouchings of the colonic wall indicating diverticulosis. As we reach the proximal sigmoid colon, things begin to change. The surrounding fat is inflamed, and we can identify a single enlarged and thickened diverticulum with surrounding fat stranding indicating inflammation. This is consistent with acute, uncomplicated sigmoid diverticulitis. What about complicated forms of diverticulitis, as in the case of perforation? If a perforation has occurred, you will see three additional findings. These include extraluminal or free air, which will look like black dots outside of the bowel and is usually easiest to see on bone or lung windows. You will also see peritoneal inflammation resulting from spillage of stool from the perforation. In this example, the small bowel loops are thickened and inflamed, indicating peritonitis. And lastly, abscess formation, which typically appears as an enhancing collection with fluid, air, and debris. Notice how the abscess sits on the bladder and causes the bladder wall to indent and become thickened due to reactive inflammation. As we review the next case, let's look for those features. Starting in the upper abdomen and flipping on lung windows, you'll notice several small locules of free intraperitoneal air indicating perforation. Let's scroll down to the pelvis to find the source. We'll follow the descending colon to keep an anatomic landmark. As we reach the pelvis, there's increasing fat stranding and thickening surrounding the sigmoid colon. There's also stranding and inflammation of the bladder. Along the back of the sigmoid colon, there is an enhancing collection containing air and fluid. This is an abscess related to perforation of sigmoid diverticulitis. So I hope you liked this video absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.